Hi there, it's Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts, and today we're going to be talking about where to stay at QuiltCon Nashville 2019. It's eight and a half months, 38 weeks, 269 days before QuiltCon. This is a second video in a series that I'm doing on the road to QuiltCon. So if you haven't watched my first one, you might wanna watch that one first and then come back here. There are three main types of accommodation and today we're gonna to be taking a look at all three and based on your budget and your needs, which one would be best for you. Please take a moment to like this video. Please take a moment to subscribe to the video. You have no idea how much it helps get this video out there. So let's take a moment here and take a look at the map of where Nashville is. It's really located centrally within the US. Good access by car in all direction by interstate. It's a major airline hub. So if you're traveling by airplane, most people will only have one or two jumps. It takes 20 to 30 minutes to get from the airport to downtown Nashville. First, we're gonna be looking at the official QuiltCon hotels. So if you go to quiltcon.com and click on Hotels in Nashville, you'll see the page where the five official QuiltCon hotels are listed. You'll find a brief description of each hotel, their name, the distance from the location, and the cost in US dollars. So QuiltCon will be held at the Nashville Music City Center. Right next door is the Omni Nashville Hotel, the Hyatt Place Nashville Downtown, and the Hilton Garden Inn Nashville Downtown. And then to the north of the Music Center, the Renaissance Nashville Hotel, and the Sheraton Grand Nashville Downtown. Okay, why do you wanna stay in one of the official hotels? Cause they're close. We are gonna be in Nashville in February. It could be spring, it could be snowing. You're gonna be lugging stuff to and from classes. All the downtown hotels have access to a free shuttle, so it's gonna be easier to get there and back. QuiltCon can be exhausting. And at the end of the day, you're gonna go back to your room and you're gonna have housekeeping, so it'll be nice and clean and you'll be able to relax and have some downtime and come back refreshed for a night on the town. I checked and none of the downtown hotels have free airport shuttles, but they do have shuttles. A couple of the hotels have breakfast included. And for me, that is a big deal. It always starts my day right. And if you are so inclined, all the hotels have pools and gyms if you wanna work out. The big disadvantage if you're driving is that parking is expensive. I prepared a summary sheet of the five official hotels and some of the features that might be of interest. Now we're gonna look at shared accommodation. So one of the best things about QuiltCon is going with your friends. And even if you just got acquaintances at Guild, you can still get a group together. Nashville is a destination tourist zone. There's gonna be lots of homes to rent. Airbnb, Flipkey, HomeAway, Turnkey, just to name a couple of the big ones. But there's also a lot of local vacation rental places. Depending on the location, it can be half the cost of renting a hotel room. So last QuiltCon, 10 members of my guild got together, actually it was 12, and we shared a home. Didn't know each other extremely well going in, but we knew each other a lot better on the way out. And when we came home at the end of every day, we would all sit around and talk about what we did in our day and debrief each other, and it was really fun. And when you go as a group, you can break up into subgroups, so you don't all have to be going to the same place at the same time. You can go in waves or you can go individually, but just make sure you have a way of all connecting with each other while you're there, so no one gets left out. I have always found when I'm away, I really like having my own kitchen. I can make my breakfast and get a good start to the day. I can make my lunch and not have to eat that awful conference food. And if you have any dietary concerns, they're so much easier to deal with in your own kitchen. If you're renting a house, chances are there's gonna be parking. So if you're driving, you got a nice free place to park that car. The downside is you gotta find your own transport to and from the conference center. And with the distance, you gotta lug your stuff. Parking right at the moment is about $15 a day at the conference center. Nashville has Uber. 
The other thing with shared accommodation is the beds are usually queen. So you're sleeping with a buddy. So if you want to do this, what's important? You need to have an agreement between everybody who's going to pay for it, how much you have to pay, and when you have to pay it. Because at the beginning, you only need a deposit, but then you've got to collect all the money in time. So I've attached in the notes below the contract that my group uses. It also covers cancellation of spot and what happens when somebody doesn't pay on time. It's casual, but last time we did have somebody fall out due to some family concerns, and it was really nice to have that blueprint in place as to what we do in that circumstance. And lastly, how about some free accommodation? So the least expensive form of accommodation in Nashville is staying with family or friends. Do you have an old college roommate or sorority sister? How about a long lost relative, maybe even a close relative? The more you can save on accommodation, the more money you have for classes and fabric. Make sure you bring a hostess gift and pay for a night out. And if they have young kids, maybe cover a night of babysitting. You get to catch up on old times, somebody oogle over your quilts. The biggest disadvantage to staying with family and friends is that you're all on your own. They could be living far out and you have to get yourself from their place to the convention center every day. And that may be taking you away from some of the events in town. But the good side is they know Nashville. So they know all the good places to go, good places to eat, where all the fun is. They may even know a country star or two. I hope you find this information helpful. So my next video is going to be on the good, the bad, and the ugly of choosing your classes and lectures at QuiltCon. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed below. Please take a moment to like this video. I'll see you next time.